Here's another opportunity to investigate L'Hopital's rule, and some things to remember are that the secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine x, and the tangent of x is equal to sine over cosine x. And here's the deal. The cosine of x is undefined, and the tangent of x is undefined when x equals pi over 2. So we have a situation here where we have to kind of investigate from one side or the other. And on both of these, if you look, if you come in from the left-hand side, so if we make this just approach pi over 2 from the left, then what happens is the secant goes to infinity and the bottom guy tangent goes to infinity, which is an indeterminate form. What we're going to do then is we're just going to take the derivative of both of these. So we'll let f of x equal secant x and the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x. We'll let g of x equal 1 plus tan x. So the derivative of that is 0 plus secant squared x. Okay, And um, when, when you do that now, we can reorganize our fraction. And what you end up with when we, when we use L'Hopital's rule is you end up with your new secant x tan x over secant squared x. Okay, And now we can do some reducing of this guy. So this secant x goes away, the squared goes away. And remember, 1 over secant x is the same as cosine. So now what that's given us, let's see, I'm going to run into these guys. Let me get these guys out of the way. So we're going to run into them. So now what we're going to end up with is tangent x, whoops, tangent x times cosine x, which is the same thing as sine x over cosine x times cosine x, which is the same thing as sine x. So just by doing a lot of algebra here, we can go from this guy right here, which is undefined on top, undefined on bottom, but clearly approaches a specific number, to our new problem, which says the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of the sine of x. Now you can plug pi over 2 in there, and you get 1. And that looks like what it should be. So L'Hopital's rule to the rescue. It's a good thing. Okay. Now we've got <clears throat> the limit as x approaches infinity of natural log x over 2 square root of x. Well, what's going on in this guy is if you plug in infinity in, you get infinity over infinity. Okay, The natural log of a large number is a large number. Natural log of a square root is a large number. And if they keep getting bigger, those keep getting bigger. So let's break them up. We'll let f of x equal the natural log of x. So f prime of x is equal to 1 over x. g of x equals 2 square roots of x, which is, remember, this is the same thing as 2 times x to the 1 half. So the derivative of that is 1 half times 2, or just 1, x to the negative 1 half, which is the same thing as 1 over square root x. Uh, so, we can put in our new denominator and our new numerator. So let's get rid of infinity over infinity. And we'll have 1 over x over 1 over square root of x. And remember, when you multiply fractions, you divide by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 1 over x times x to the 1 half over 1. Okay. One of the interesting things about this is if you have if you have x over x to the 1 half over x, you can subtract the exponents. And in the bottom we get x to the 1 half power. So what's happening? Well, we can set up our new limit. Our new limit will be 
the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of x. And that's going to be 0. So again, using L'Hopital's rule, we can reduce a really complicated fraction all the way down to where you let that top stand still, let the bottom grow, you get a number that approaches 0.